Let's clear the neck really quickly. So just bend your head forward. <coughs> bend your head backwards. Okay, any problems with that? Nope. Rotate to the right. Good, rotate to left. the left. You're fine. We can do a quadrant where I'm just going to bring it back. And you're fine, right? Mm -hmm. You're good. And then let's bring it back. No problem at all. And if you, even if he said it tweaks in my neck a little bit, if it doesn't reproduce his symptoms in his arm, I'm not worried about it. Just bring your arms, thumbs up, and just bring your arms up and over your head. Okay? And then come on back down. Okay, any pain with that? Yes. All right, tell me when. Watch his face. Right there. Now, does it keep going? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So pain at about 160 degrees and it continues. Is that a painful arc or not a painful arc? No, no, no. That is not a painful arc. But he's got pain with active abduction. Does he have full abduction? Does it look like? Yeah. It looks like it's full, but he's got end range pain there. Okay. Um, turn around. So no painful arc. We've got that. So we can say no painful arc. scapular position. He's, again, he's a, he a little too bad here. Do um, you see the scapular border here? Okay, so do you see how he's more protracted on the right? Okay, so the right scapula is more protracted. I want to look for any kind of rotation, uh, upward or downward rotation. He doesn't really look too bad with that. Um, bring your, slowly bring your arms up and over your head. Thumbs up? Yep, yep, yep. Something that tells me we got to look at his scapula. When you see funky movements like that or the shaking movement, we got to look at the scapula. That's all. Um, anyhow, uh, we're going to do something called the Apley scratch test. Uh, and this is just an active test just to let us know if he's got pain or limitation with internal or external rotation. It's an active test. It's a screening test. It's all it is. So with your left arm, reach back as far as you can go. Great. Okay. And then let it down. So he's down to about T4 here, T3, T4. And I would write that down to T3. T3. All right. And let's see what we got on the other side. Okay. Good. Same. Basically the same. So he's within normal limits for that. No problem with that. We're going to check internal rotation. So now bring your hand, left hand behind your back and reach up as high as you can. Okay. So maybe about T5, we'll say. Just guess. And then let's have you bring the other one up. Mm. <laughs> okay, pain? No, okay. Okay, so limitations. So T5, T6, T7, to about T8, okay? So he's got some limitation here. It's surprising that he doesn't have pain, but he does have some limitation. So what does that tell us at this point? Internal rotator. He's got some loss of internal rotation, probably. Okay, that's all it really tells us. This is, a, this is a composite movement. This is a combination of internal rotation, extension, and adduction. So this is all three in one. Um, but it just tells me we need to probably pay attention to internal rotation. All right, just relax this arm. I'm just going to bring it up. So a ton of range. He's got above 180 for abduction on the left side. And let's see what we got here. How are you doing there? A little painful. A little bit of pain. Probably like a near, 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10 near end range? Yes. Okay, so we're going to document that. Full, full, full passive range, slight pain at end range. But again, he's got plus 180 degrees of abduction. So he's falling into, to me, he's already showing signs of, um, of a lax shoulder, like an Ambry kind of person maybe, I don't know. Um, let's look at rotation, so scoot that way just a little bit, relax this arm, and let it go. Okay, so this side, he's got, I mean, I could take my goniometer out, and I, if I were to document this, in the clinic, I would write this down. So I'm guessing he's got 120, but I'm just, in the clinic, I would actually use my goniometer and measure that. So he's got approximately 120 of external on the left, and with internal... Whoa. What do you guys think that is? Whoa. Not much. Oh, like 30, 30, 45? Yeah, 40, 30. 35, yeah. I think it's a little more than 30. I'd probably give it more like 40, 45 for internal. Okay? So that's his uninvolved side. Relax your arm. Scoot that way just a little bit. Yeah, let it go. Whoa. Okay? So, wow. 
Well, that's not one we, weirdo. Uh, one twenty, yeah, or something one. like that. More, okay. Let's look at his. And there's no pain with that, right? Okay. Relax your arm. That's his, this is what he's got for internal rotation. Oh god, that's it. So, guys, <laughs> got GERD. Remember we're talking about GERD? Yeah. Lenohumeral internal rotation deficiency. He's got. He, you got GERD. Yeah. <laughs> um, huh. Interesting. I mean, this is this. He's got. What do you guys think that is? 15, 15, 15, 20 at best. 15 on a really good day. Okay. You know he's got a loss of internal rotation on this side. We know he's got excessive range of motion in the other movements. So while he's on his back, what else should I be doing right now? Access, check his accessory mobility. So I'm going to do a posterior uh, inferior glide to so relax your arm. And I'm not doing it because he's limited. I'm doing it because I want to see how loose the shoulder is. Okay? That is a loose shoulder. Okay? Now, I want to find out if that inferior capsule is tight in any way, shape, or form. So this is where you guys, I would recommend, scoop up a little bit. You guys should really practice this a lot in the clinic because you would typically think, well, you know, he's got full abduction, maybe the inferior capsule is totally fine. You have to really be, use your hands to figure out if there's any tightness there because tightness of the inferior capsule is not a good thing and tightness of the posterior capsule is not a good thing. Well, And I can check this at different angles, but I'm just looking at his inferior glide here. And there's no pain with that, right? Let me just double check this. Relax your arm. He's symmetrical. So he's symmetrically loose, okay? I'm going to do an anterior glide. Now, we did this in class. This is an anterior drawer, okay? So I'm going to hold down that coracoid process, and I'm just pulling that humeral head upward. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And you guys really probably can't see this very well. Oh, we could do that in class. He's slightly more lax. Do you see that? He's got a little more anterior laxity. Not a lot, but a little bit. His pec minor is tight. So as I stand to come behind him, he is more protracted on this side. The pec, he's higher on this side. So he's got some pec minor tightness on the right side. Um, let's do a posterior glide. Okay, so relax your arm. Let everything just go. You're good, right? No problem? Okay. And now we're back. Pain? Okay. A little bit of posterior capsule tightness. Not, not a lot. Okay, so it's less than I would have expected. Really keeping everything in neutral, so this way I'm isolating the uh, contractile structure. And also, look at him. Look at his. I mean, this is another mm -hmm. thing. But he's just he's really internal ro internally rotated a lot. This arm just to here. Don't like push it down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hold strong. Hold, 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 hold. Good. Same thing here. Hold strong. Don't like push. Hold, 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 hold. Feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So supraspinatus, strong and painless. Okay. Let's do um, adduction. So for resisted AD deduction, pull here, don't only pull you out, okay? So hold strong, hold, hold, hold. Watch how press platypus is stabilizing him as well. So yep. not just the position yep. she's hold, him in, hold, 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 but how she stabilizes You're him. fine, right? Mm -hmm. No problem with that. All right, we're going to do internal rotation, and then we're going to do external rotation, okay? So keep your elbow by your side, elbow against your side here. Don't only rotate your arm outward, okay? okay. So hold strong, don't only push. Hold, 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 hold. Good. Strong and painless, okay? As expected. Hold here, don't let go that way. Hold strong. Hold, 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 hold. Good. Right here. Bring your arm just to here. Don't let go inward. Inward. Okay. Yep. Ready? Hold strong. Hold, 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 hold. Okay, good. Good job. Hold here. Don't let go that way. Hold strong. Hold. Hold, 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 hold. <laughs> <laughs> Okay? Weakness. All right? Okay. You okay? Yeah, okay? Good. All right. Weak and painless or weak and painful? Less. Weak and painless. Okay. This is huge because if you think about arthrokinematics of the glenohumeral joint, arthrokinematically, what does the infraspinatus and teres minor do? These are the posterior cuff muscles. What do they do? No. They keep that humeral head depressed, okay? All right? 
and they keep it from gliding anteriorly. So basically what's happening, if he has a weak rotator, or external rotators are weak, what's going to happen with him is during throwing, especially during deceleration, his arm is going, okay? And those cuff muscles aren't really helping to hold it back. The other thing is that during cocking phase, he's not really getting anything with elevation. He's not getting any good um, humeral depression. So he's probably getting some, some impingement. That humeral head is not pulling, is not working, is not being held down, okay? So those muscles there are very, very important um, for anybody with a shoulder injury, okay? Because they help to, remember the um, circle stability concept? He has, he is in, his shoulder, his scapula and his humerus are in a bad relationship, okay? And they need some therapy. They need couples therapy. <laughs> I get it. I just, yeah. Never mind. You guys, when do I manually muscle test him? I know that they're weak, okay? Um, so if I want to grade it, theoretically, I need to put him in prone and externally rotate him and give it a grade. You can do that. The test is only valid when it's not painful. So if this movement does not elicit pain, and I don't think it would elicit pain for him, we could go ahead and, and do the manual muscle test. If the muscle test causes pain, or if the position, I should say, of the muscle test causes pain, then you have an invalid um, uh, result. And remember, you ramp up your resistance very, very slowly before you like max out on your resistance. You, you want to make sure when you're doing your resisted tests, you are keeping them pretty much arm by their side. I mean, I have test abductions a little bit away from their side, but internal external rotation is pretty much at 90. If you feel like you have to put a, a, a towel here to make them hold it, you can do that. We're going to do two impingement tests. And the thing is this, impingement, we're going to talk about this next week, impingement is just a symptom. It is not a diagnosis. It is a symptom. So you were good here, right? This is called the NEARS test. You guys are going to do this next week. And this is going to look um, a little bit of pain there. All right. So that's a test. This is usually a, a this might be a coracoacromial impingement um, test. And then we can also have, um, or it could be subacromial. We could have a, uh, we could do what's called a Hawkins test, where I'm bringing him up and I'm just kind of pushing him into some internal rotation. You're okay with that? A little pain. Huh? Where'd you feel the pain? Uh, same, like here, going around. Okay. All right. How are you here? No pain. Nothing? All right, now I'm just going to do this. Relax. You're okay with that. Mm -hmm. So positive nearest negative Hawkins Kennedy. We'll talk more about those next week. But he's got one sign for one impingement sign. Again, of course he's going to have probably some degree of impingement because he's not he doesn't have good balance of his rotator cuff. Okay. Don't I push down. Oh, 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 Jeff. Sorry. Here, hold and don't I push. Hold strong. Hold, 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 hold. Is that right foot come up yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That foot side. So that's like a four. His whole left side. I could have broken him. Uh, <laughs> and the same thing here. Hold strong. Do I push down? Hold. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> that's a little left. This is a thing you guys are going to typically find. Internal rotators typically are, are overly strong, and external rotators are overly weak. It's kind of like hip adductors, hip abductors. Abductors are weak, adductors are strong. These are just, these are just patterns that you guys are going to find. Now, the thing about lower trap testing, you've got to be you can't do it if it hurts. If you've got a patient with some impingement, this position might hurt them, so you can't do it. So sometimes I defer the test, and if I have to, uh, I, if I can test it, I will. Right, left. All right, so. Uh, see how old I'm getting? I have to figure all this out. All right, hold your arm here if you can, and don't push down. All right, hold strong. Hold, 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 hold. Thanks. You go, Jeff. That's not bad. Okay. Um, let's see what we get in this set. If the position hurts, we can't do it. Bring it up and hold. Can you hold it? Yep. Hold strong. Don't push. Hold, 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 hold. <laughs> He's holding on okay. to that play. table. Hold it it's a little bit weak, but it's not as bad as the, as the uh, middle trap. So I might say that's like a four, the other one is a four plus. 
it's not it's not terrible, but that could use a little bit of work too. But his his main his major impairments are the external rotators that are weak and the middle trapezius. He's got a little bit of posterior capsule tightness, but a lot of internal rotation deficit. Okay, so what does that mean? If your if your posterior cuff is tight, that's going to limit. These are external rotators back here, right? If these are tight, what can you not do? You can't do a lot of internal rotation. So something, if Jeff were my patient, I would actually do a lot of soft tissue work on the posterior capsule. I would get in here, I, not just posterior capsule, but the posterior fibers of the uh, infraspinatus and teres minor. And that doesn't feel great, right? Nope. Nope. So you can already feel, I feel a lot of thickening here. It doesn't feel wet. Look how he's wincing, how he's wincing. So this is part of your, uh, your palpation. This is where he's tight. What, okay. what exercise? He's got weakness of the pivoters and the protectors, right? So what do we work on first? The Remember the pivoters? Yeah. The traps, a middle trap, those ones are your pivoters. So you need to work on mid-trap strengthening. And then what do you want to work into from that point on? Right to the protectors. Work on that, the protectors. He's got to work on cuff strengthening. He's got to work those external rotators. Um, we can do this test in two different positions. And theoretically, they say it helps to isolate the supraspinatus. So on this arm, bring your arm to here and hold it and don't push down. Hold, 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 hold. You're good. Okay? And then same thing here. Hold it and don't push down. Hold, 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 hold. He's good. So supraspinatus is fine. We can also do it at 90 degrees. Hold here. And now we're getting into a little more of an impingement position. So hold here, don't like push, hold, 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 and then hold, 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 hold. He's good. Let's say he had pain here, but he did not have pain here. Huh? What would that be, diagnostically speaking? He's fine down here, but we bring him up here and he says that hurts. This is a hard, this is a hard one. I don't know if you guys... Not the supraspinatus, because the supraspinatus is fine. It's, it's not the supraspinatus, because we, it's, if, it's, if it's the supraspinatus, it's going to hurt here and up here. The bursitis? Bursitis. Bursitis, exactly. Yeah. Bam. That could be a sign of bursitis, because what's happening here, we already are in some degree of impingement. We're contracting this muscle, so he's getting some upward translation here, and it's probably pinching the bursa. So that's just something to kind of think about. But... You know, I think if they're if they have uh, if they're strong and painless for abduction, theoretically they should be strong and painless uh, with the empty can test uh, as well. Okay, but it's not a bad idea just to go ahead and test it. Right, here we go. I did that. Uh, I can't see. I can't see. I can't see it. On your partner. You need this to is so sign dramatic. out. <laughs> if they have posterior capsule tightness. Oh, rotator weakness. Too susceptible. Is too fine. Internal rotation deficit of more than 20 degrees on the non-dominant side.